Upon subsequent exposure to the allergens, what substances are released from the muscles? To drill you again, those are the substances that we remember them with the acronym of HOPE. Histamine, ECFA, leukotrienes, and prostaglandins. Again, why do we call leukotrienes slow-reacting substances? Because histamine and ECFA are preformed substances in the mast cells, and they are readily released, whereas it takes a little time for leukotrienes to be produced. What are the structural lesions and findings in asthma? Hypertrophy and hyperplasia of smooth muscles surrounding the bronchioles. Mucus plugs in the lumen of bronchioles that contain Kirschman spirals, charcoal-laden crystals, and eosinophils. What are the charcoal-laden crystals made up of? Eosinophilic granules. What are the Kirschman's spirals made up of? These are whorls or coiled spirals of shed epithelial cells within the plugs of the airways of the asthmatics. What would be the striking CBC finding in asthma? Eosinophilia and at times presence of high levels of basophils and mast cells. While examining mucoid plugs of an asthmatic patient, we notice the above structures. Can you tell us what is the structure that is labeled A and what is the structure which is labeled B and what are they made up of? The A points to charcoal crystals. These are eosinophilic granules. B points to Kirschman's spirals. These are shed epithelium within the lumen of the bronchioles or within the sputum. These are charcoal crystals and these are Kirschman's spirals. Why do they call these crystals charcoal crystals? Because they look like crystals of hot, red, eosinophilic charcoals laid down alongside the fireplace and over time blocking the chimney. Oh, these are your hot, red, eosinophilic charcoals in here. And when you look at the cross-section of the bronchioles, cross-section of the chimney, you see the laid down hot red charcoals that they block the lumen of the chimney. And they cause, of course, stenosis of the bronchioles in the patient. Actually, why do they call these crystals charcoal-laden crystals? It is because they were first described by two physicians, Jean Charcot and Juan Leyden. What triggers asthma? USA, actually because the prevalence of asthma in USA is up to about 7%. And there is a high percentage of asthmatic patients in the USA. But U stands for upper respiratory infection and stimulation that induces asthma. S stands for any type of a stress. It may be cold stress or exercise stress. 
and A stands for the allergens. Back to the same case scenario. Lack of response to which of the following therapeutic options would most definitely rule out COPD and to be more precise emphysema from the top two differentials in this case. Response to albuterol, aprotropium, beclomethazone, metaproteranol, or epinephrine. The answer is beclomethazone. The patient most likely has asthma. Glucocorticosteroids are very effective against eosinophilic inflammation of asthma, but they are for most part less effective against neutrophilic inflammation of the emphysema. All other medications such as albuterol, aprotropium, metoproteranol, or epinephrine can equally be helpful in asthma and COPD, and in particular when I talk about COPD, as we're going to see later, we're going to be talking about chronic bronchitis in this particular case. Let's compare and contrast characteristics of asthma with COPD in general and emphysema in particular. Age of diagnosis in asthma is childhood to adolescence, whereas in COPD is mid-40s. Onset of dyspnea in asthma is very sudden, in COPD is gradual. Diurnal pattern of cough. In asthma, the patients cough more at nighttime, whereas in COPD they cough more in daytime. Tifanu index is decreased in asthma, but that low ratio is reversible and it can be increased with treatment by bronchodilators. In emphysema, the ratio is decreased, but it is irreversible with application of albuterol. History of smoking may be present with asthma, but almost always is a prerequisite for COPD. Peak expiratory flow rate is low or normal in asthma, but is always low in COPD. Diffusing capacity of gases may be normal to increased in asthma, whereas it's always decreased in COPD due to loss of alveolar capillary surface area. Long elasticity, long elastic recoil is normal in asthma and is decreased in COPD. Immune cells that we find in the lung, in asthma they are eosinophils, in COPD they are PMNs, lymphocytes, and macrophages. Major inflammatory cells in asthma are eosinophils, and in COPD are neutrophils. Blood eosinophilia is present in asthma, is absent in COPD. Aggravating factors in asthma are allergens, cold air, and exercise, whereas in COPD it is pulmonary infections. Reversibility with treatment. We see it with asthma, we don't see it with emphysema. Treatment of asthma includes glucocorticosteroids plus bronchodilators, and with emphysema it includes only bronchodilators. Let's look at the treatment options for asthma and COPD. Beta-2 agonists such as albuterol are commonly used in asthma. They can be used in COPD, especially if the COPD, again, is due to chronic bronchitis. What do they do? They dilate the bronchioles. Chromolin sodium is commonly used in asthma. It has no function in COPD. What does chromolin sodium do? It stabilizes the mast cells and inhibits mast cells degranulation. So it has prophylactic effect in asthma. Aprotropium is an anticholinergic. You can use it for asthma. We may use it for COPD if that COPD is due to chronic bronchitis. This is an anticholinergic bronchodilates and inhibits bronchoconstriction. 
Montelukast can be used in asthma, cannot be used in COPD. This is a leukotriene receptor antagonist. So it inhibits the leukotriene's effect and will not allow the asthmatic response to be produced in the patients. Xylitol can be used in asthma, cannot be used in COPD. This is a lipooxygenase inhibitor, inhibits therefore leukotriene's formation by the mast cells. Theophylline is a bronchodilator. We can use it in asthma and we can use it in COPD as long as that COPD is due to chronic bronchitis. Theophylline is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, raises intracellular cyclic AMP, inhibits tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, and inhibits leukotriene synthesis, and as a result, it reduces inflammation. Glucocorticosteroids are heavily used in asthma, can be used in COPD as long as that COPD is due to chronic bronchitis. Glucocorticosteroids have generalized anti-inflammatory effects and they also inhibit phospholipase A2 and as a result they will inhibit formation of leukotrienes. Effusion of gases from alveoli into pulmonary vessels and vice versa depends on the volume of gases, surface area of intercepting membranes, the effusivity of various gases, partial pressure difference, delta P of gases across the membrane, and thickness of the membrane. How does Fick's law equation describe this reciprocity? Well, this is the formula for Fick's law. V of the gases or volume of transversing gases is equal to the surface area of intercepting membranes multiplied by D, which is diffusivity of various gases, multiplied by delta P, which is the partial pressure of each gas across the membrane, divided into T, and T stands for thickness of intercepting membrane. Several conditions cause type 1 hypoxemic respiratory failure. Diagnose the disease of each of the following patients with hypoxemic respiratory failure with the parameters in fixed equation that has caused his or her respiratory failure. Well, let's start with the case scenarios. Your first patient is a 75-year-old man who is presented with a two-day history of fever, chills, and dyspnea. Gram staining of the sputum is significant for paired gram-positive cocci that are optokin susceptible. Culture of the sputum on blood agar reveals green alpha-hemolytic zone surrounding the colonies. As you recall from your microbiology, this old man has most likely acquired pneumonia due to a streptococcus pneumoniae. So what does pneumonia do to this equation? Which of those parameters it affects? Well, it increases the thickness due to pulmonary edema and reduces A, the surface area. In what two important respects? Asthma and chronic bronchitis as two causes of COPD resemble each other. Both are due to bronchiolar stenosis as a result of decreased luminal diameter to increased wall thickness ratio in addition to mucus accumulation. Secondly, both of them respond positively to beclomethazone administration.